My name is John Hillary. I'm the executive director of War on One, which is a British non-governmental organization in the forefront of the fight against TTIP. And we're really happy because the movement against TTIP and also the EU-Canada deal, CETA, has grown to be a mass movement, not just in the UK, but across the whole of Europe. We know that in 28 member states of the European Union, there are millions and millions of citizens who've taken action against TTIP and against CETA and against this whole new generation of free trade deals. What's really great for us is that all the trade unions in the UK are against it, 100%. All of the small-scale industries are beginning to wake up to it as well. So we have a new website called Business Against TTIP, and business leaders are beginning to say that they also are against this deal. We have students against TTIP, we have artists against TTIP, which is bringing together lots of celebrities. We have celebrities like Jamie Oliver, who has spoken out because he feels that TTIP is a real threat to food standards in the future. So on all these bases, we have a big mass movement of people, but now we need to turn that into political power. If the European Commission had any democratic legitimacy, they would listen to this mass movement and they would say, no, we cannot continue with the negotiations on TTIP or CETA anymore. The problem is, of course, that the European Union is fundamentally an anti-democratic institution. And so what we're seeing is a continuance of the negotiations completely against the will of the peoples. And this means that we have a big problem because we can only find alternative ways to stop the tre treaty going through. One of those ways, which is most important, is the European Parliament. And we've been working very hard to convince the MEPs that TTIP isn't something they can sign up to. And in July 2015, there was a vote in the European Parliament where we managed to convince the Social Democratic UK MEPs, the Labour MEPs, to vote against the pro-TTIP resolution. Unfortunately, the Germans, the Italians and other um, Social Democrats voted for the resolution, so it went through. We need to strengthen the resistance at the European level, but we also need to strengthen the resistance at the national level with national campaigns. It's clear we will defeat TTIP. I don't think there's any doubt about that. The question is where we can defeat it and therefore where we can continue building the pressure. It would be possible to have a completely different treaty between the European Union and the USA, which started from different premises and delivered on environmental and social goals. The first thing that you would say if you wanted to negotiate such a treaty is you'd ask the question, what level of trade and investment is good? What type of trade and investment is good? Because at the moment we have a system which says all trade is good, all investment is good, and we need as much as we possibly can. For a social and environmentally just TTIP, what we would do is we would say, how much trade do we want to see for the benefit of the planet? What type of trade do we want to see? In the UK, for example, we export 150,000 tonnes of pork every year. And we import 150,000 tonnes of pork every year. This is crazy on everybody's logic. But for the logic of capitalism, this is fantastic. Now, we would invert that log logic and we would say, look, we need to have trade in the service of people. We need to have trade which is good for the environment. We would need to see all of the international labor organization conventions, the ILO conventions, ratified by both sides, the USA as well as the EU, and that that could be a basis for raising standards across the Atlantic. TTIP is about lowering standards and removing barriers to trade. We say let's raise standards because they are more important than increasing the profits of the transnational corporations that trade across the Atlantic. So we would start from a different premise. We would have a completely different method of negotiating, totally in the open, totally transparent, and we would have a completely different result. That is the sort of trade deal which the people of Europe and the people of the United States could believe in, and that would set a genuinely positive model for all future trade deals around the world. Yeah.